Hey everyone. All right. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? I see Pika. I see Cash, Chico, Snoop, Bo. Welcome. Hey girl. How you doing, my love? Um, welcome everybody. Welcome. How am I sounding? How am I sounding? Am I sounding still a little off? Can't wait to find out about all this one. This one, this case is a trip. Look, I'm going to take it slow. I'm not rushing. I'm just taking it very slow. Hey, Emily. Hey, I've got words. I see Chrissy B. Sushi just about. You sound like hell. <laughs> I am actually feeling a lot better, but I sound like hell. But I'm actually feeling a lot better, believe it or not. Hold up. Where did my Google go? Hold up, y'all. <laughs> She goes like, you sound like hell, damn it. <laughs> I, I'm actually feeling a lot better right now. Um, believe it or not, where are all my tabs, damn it? This is what happens when you have a dual screen. Shit gets everywhere, and you're like, well, where is everybody at? I had everything set up, and then the, all my tabs went away. All my tabs went away. Shout out to everybody. Um, thank you. Listen. You got I told y'all I get sick at least once a season, weather changes or whatnot, like spring, summer, fall, winter, all these seasons. I always get at least sick and it's really bad. Um, but I'm actually feeling better. I, I'm done with the fever, thank God, because I was so feverish yesterday. Uh, but I think I broke that fever. I broke that. I broke that fever yesterday. I sure as hell did. But I've been draining a lot of my sinuses. Drinking a lot of coffee, doing what I have to do, and yeah, um, it's the draining part though. But it's all up here, and so it's getting better though. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. I do feel better, but um, I still sound like shit. If you guys can hear me, I still sound very shitty. I'm still very much draining everything that I have. Uh, right, Alyssa, I know, love, like, I need to get, maybe I need to put some vitamins on my Amazon wish list. I need to set up my Amazon wish list so you guys can add stuff that y'all want me to, like, try or something. I'm willing to try everything and then maybe do, like, a review of it. Um, maybe I'll do that. I don't know how to set it up that way, though. Like, how do you set it up so that people can add things in there? Like, you can edit. I, th I thought I did that before. You can edit. Like, say somebody wants to send vitamins that they recommend. I might try that. I might try that. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's the second that the temperature changes. I'm always the first to get sick. It's every time. Yeah, I need to do that. I definitely need to do that. Shout out to the people that have been sending me stuff. So let's talk about this case real quick. Um, it won't be too, too long. But you have a young woman who's 24 years old by the name of Jennifer Mendes Olascoaga. I think that's how you say her last name, Olascoaga, Olascoaga. She is a teacher's assistant in, assistant in a Dallas IST school, and um, essentially she goes missing. She went to go drop off at a friend. She went missing on the 27th of September, and she dropped off a friend, I believe, at like um, – I want to say a um, a trailer park area. She dropped off a friend at a tra trailer park area, and then she goes missing. And then suddenly family members start receiving all kinds of weird texts about Jennifer and her disappearance, how they're never going to find her again, and everything. A lot of the stuff that's happening is not making sense. So there was new surveillance that has been released about Jennifer. OK, and this is essentially like when she was last seen. This was released yesterday. So police released a new surveillance video of a missing Dallas IST, ISD, excuse me, employee who could be in danger. Now, I don't know. I don't know why they're saying she could be a danger. I mean, she's missing. I would assume that everybody that, you know, there might be more to this story, but. Is there more to her disappearance that we're not really seeing? How did she go missing? Like, what what, what happened here? Uh, and a lot of people are speculating different things. But this is essentially the last home. footage. Trust perform this is her last footage. Newly released. She's 24 years old. She's a teacher. And she took a quick trip in Dallas. The video changes the timeline for when she was last seen. 
let me see. So we have, I swear I've been seeing a lot. When was the last time we were watching footage of um, gas stations, people pulling up? So this is her. She goes in there. She looks like she's getting a couple of, like, maybe some snacks or whatever. Everything, I mean, she doesn't look like she's in distress. Right? Nothing out of the ordinary, but... What happened? Like, why is she missing? What happened here? She gets back in her car. Look, she's pumping gas. She dumped something in the trash. You think the text is a little too on point? But nothing out of the normal, um, out of the ordinary, I would say, right? She gets back in her car. It's a very busy intersection. And she's off. What happened to this woman? What, 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 did, I mean, what happened to this woman? Why would she, well, what is it about her disappearance? So, I mean, let me see. They they did find her vehicle. Um, hold up, y'all. Let me show you another tab. Family and friends gather at the Dallas Police Headquarters seeking help to finding Jennifer Mendez. Okay? I'm missing Jennifer Mendez. So it's been two weeks that she banished after dropping off a friend um, in a home in, is it Siogaville? Siogaville on September 27th. But new information suggests that she made a, a, a later stop in Dallas. On Wednesday, a family member urged outside Dallas Police Headquarters, urging investigators to do everything they can to bring her home. They had a message from the community: stop, take a look at her picture, and take a minute to feel what it would be what it would be like to have someone you love vanish. Jennifer was always an outgoing person, her brother-in-law says, who wanted to be identified as a Marco, only as Marco. She loved being around others and would always catch and I would always catch her, you know, just singing randomly, singing a song that she likes. Give me one sec, guys. Sorry, guys. Um, right now they're struggling, they're stuck. They don't know what to do, where to go. As the days and weeks continue, um, loved ones as well as complete strangers have continued to search for her, becoming amateur investigators. If I hear the word amateur investigators anymore, that's what I'm saying. No cell phone pings? Yeah, this, so again, this is a young woman, 24 years old. She went missing about two weeks ago. She went to go drop off a friend, and the timeline is a bit off. That's what it sounds like. Uh, people are concerned that she might be in, like, she's missing and endangered. It, at least that's what it sounds like to me. But I'm just wondering, like, what, what do we make of all of this? They also had a message for the community to just look at the information. I, I mean, none of it is making sense. And then the families, soon after her disappearance, the families then start receiving text messages about her disappearance, how they're never going to find her. So a lot of this is just, what's up with this case? What is going on? And I'm going to try to, I'm going to pull this up right here so everybody can see this. Way for Jennifer Mendez. Today marks one week since the Dallas ISD teaching assistant went missing. Seagoville police say that her car was found in Mesquite, but nothing else. Natalie Haddad joins us live from the police department with the latest this morning, Natalie, because there are many, many questions in this case. 
It's very strange. Many questions and many people looking for her. A search just underway yesterday. We were there uh, to see that happening. The 24-year-old Jennifer Mendez hasn't been seen since Wednesday, September 27th. That is exactly one week ago. Her family tells WFAA that for her to just stop calling or to stop contact and just disappear like this is not her normal behavior. And clearly, Seagoville Police and the Texas Rangers agree they have teamed up to help find her. Now, police say the last traces of Jennifer can be seen on surveillance footage. The Dallas ISD teaching assistant was at Creekside Mobile Home Park just off Highway 75 on Wednesday, dropping off a friend. After that, she mysteriously disappeared. But the next day, Jennifer's family found her car about 10 minutes from the mobile home park in Mesquite on Milam and Lawson Road. Jennifer's wallet was inside the car, but there was no other sign of her. Jennifer's family says when they found the car, they quickly knew something was wrong. She would never leave her wallet anywhere. And we tried calling her phone. Her phone was off. She never has her phone off. She only Segoville police tell WFAA that they're they have not looked into or they are not assuming that this is foul play just yet. However, they are looking into text messages that were forwarded to the family from a friend of Jennifer's. Those text messages reportedly said that they would never see Jennifer again, asking if they were missing someone. So a lot of so my thing is, couldn't police trace where those messages? Can, I mean, a lot of it is not saying. So thinking foul play or suicide at this point, and somebody said that there's a prison near Sigaville, Texas. Lady BB, shout out to you. Could she have picked somebody up? But then you would think that, like, what was left in her car? Her car was found. I mean... Something sounds off. You know, you think they would trace it? That's 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 what I was thinking too. Well, they didn't say that, did they? Like, I don't think she said that the, her items were found. Nothing was really mentioned. You guys remember when? Um, oh man, the lady that went missing, her wallet and her stuff was in there. Um, a prisoner would have kept would have kept the car, maybe. I'm side-eyeing those text messages. That's where the Duggars... Oh, Seagaville. Seagaville, there's a prison there? That's where the Duggar son is saving time? Lord have mercy, yo. Ain't he like a pedo or something? Yeah, anyways. That whole different life. The wallet was found in the car. See, I'm, I missed it. I missed it. That's where Josh Duggar is at. Thank you, L. I was like, I know that... Them somebody's in there oh my goodness so many women and children going missing right just the tea please oh you talk about carly debbie collier yeah debbie collier was another one that was trippy mj just hearing of this case but is the friend who sent the text message the same friend who last saw her that's where i want to know hey care bear that's where i want to know like What's up with these details? If they just grabbed her and was fighting, so that could be why they left the wallet there. The details sound a bit off to me, you guys. Hold up. Let me go back to this real quick. Clearly, Seagoville police and the Texas Rangers agree they have teamed up to help find her. Now, police say the last traces of Jennifer can be seen on surveillance footage. The Dallas ISD teaching assistant was at Creekside Mobile Home Park just off Highway 75 on Wednesday, dropping off a friend. After that, she mysteriously disappeared. But the next day, Jennifer's family found her car about 10 minutes from the mobile home park in Mesquite on Milam and Lawson Road. See, they found the, they found the car the next day. Hmm. Right, Christina. I mean, right. You're absolutely right. The friend is maybe not such a good friend. If she had unalived herself, probably wouldn't have gotten very far unless she unalived herself somewhere else, if that is the case.
Hey Rochelle, welcome to the channel. Um, there's a lot of missing pieces. This is not making sense. Her car was abandoned on the side of the road. So whoever took her had a vehicle of their own. Or she would be in that area. I wonder if someone was pretending to be a cop and pulled her over. Could be. You think the texts reveal a lot? I don't know, yo. Could the car have been ditched by someone else? It, you know, they're not even saying that, like, what else was involved in that car? What, like, what did they find additional? Jennifer's wallet was inside the car, but there was the no other sign of her. Jennifer's family says when they found the car, they quickly knew something was wrong. So did they find her phone in the car, too? Because it can't, like they said, you guys said it too. Could they have pinged it? She would never leave her wallet anywhere. And we tried calling her phone. Her phone was off. She never has her phone off. She only. A Seagoville police tell WFAA that they're, they have not looked into, or they are not assuming that this is foul play just yet. However, they are looking into text messages that were forwarded to. I don't know, y'all. This is just. I hope that this is solved quickly as well, Chico, but it's definitely feeling some type of way. And it's not like this. It's been two weeks since this lady went missing. I, I do want to mention on a more serious note, the uh, Texas Rangers have joined the search now for missing Dallas teachers. They got a Texas Rangers going as well assistant that we have been following here. So it was a week ago tonight, in fact, that Jennifer Mendez Olascaga was last seen in Seagaville. She was given a friend a ride home. A Robbie Owens learned that her vehicle was found the next day. It was abandoned in Mesquite. This stretch of Lawson Road in Mesquite, where the car was abandoned, is heavily wooded. Just take a look. Family members who have been searching tell me that there is also a creek bed back there. They've searched all over. But check this out. Not only is the area heavily wooded, look behind me. It is also heavily traveled. And so family members are hoping that someone saw something that will help them find Jennifer. Because every day that passes is more time to worry. But I think the first three days were just, you know, very hard for us, for everybody, because, you know, we can't find her. Uh, we can't find her. And she's, you know, once we go home, you know, when our, we know we're at, that we're going to have a bed to lay in and we don't know if she's even being safe. Marco is Jennifer's brother in law. He is careful to remain hopeful in the words he uses, but he says the family is understandably distraught. He says the Dallas ISD teacher's assistant would not have just disappeared on her own. When she didn't show up for work on Thursday, school staffers notified the family. Jennifer was last seen at the Creekside Mobile Home Park. See, see, okay. But I thought they found the car the following day. So she didn't show up to work. Rochelle, thank you for becoming a member. See, this, this this is throwing me off. I swear to God that when we were listening to the other reporting, they said that they found the family found the car. So they so did they find the car first and then determine she was vanished, or did they go to the school? Like, did she was she supposed to show up at work and then determine? That she wasn't there, and then it was determined that she was vanished. Rochelle, thank you for gifting five members, love. Thank you, thank you. I just, wow, StreamYard is letting me know. StreamYard is letting us know when people are gifting. Thank you. That is a first. Thank you, Rochelle. If you guys got a uh, gifted membership, please drop some hearts for Rochelle, please, and thank you. Um... Yeah, did they say it was close friends? To, Queen Bella, am I the only one that's hearing this? They did say it was close to friends' house the next day. They did. So did they determine that she was vanished after she showed up to work? Or not that she didn't show up to work? Or before? 
I I know I'm not hearing shit. Hold up, y'all. I, I know. I, hmm. Hmm. Sums off here. Hold up. I, I'm going by her reporting. We just watched the video. Where was it at? Was it this one? This right here, right here, right here. Girl said what? Many questions and many people looking for her. A search just underway yesterday. We were there uh, to see that happening. The 24-year-old Jennifer Mendez hasn't been seen since Wednesday, September 27th. That is exactly one week ago. Her family tells WFAA that for her to just stop calling or to stop contact and just disappear like this is not her normal behavior. And clearly, Seagoville police and the Texas Rangers agree they have teamed up to help Find her. Now, police say the last traces of Jennifer can be seen on surveillance footage. The Dallas ISD teaching assistant was at Creekside Mobile Home Park just off Highway 75 on Wednesday, dropping off a friend. After that, she mysteriously disappeared. But the next day, Jennifer's family found her car about 10 minutes from the mobile home park in Mesquite on Milam and Lawson Road. So the next day, her car was found by family. Police could have found an abandoned car before not knowing whose it was or who was found after family was notified. Her family found it. Car was found about 10 minutes from the mobile home lot, says Mickey. And thank you, Rochelle, again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um... Jennifer's wallet was inside the car, but there was no other sign of her. Jennifer's family says when they found the car, they quickly knew something was wrong. They found the car. They quickly knew something was wrong. All right, let me go right here now. Hold up. Hold up. Is careful to remain hopeful in the words he uses, but he says the family is understandably distraught. He says the Dallas ISD teacher's assistant would not have just disappeared on her own. When she didn't show up for work on Thursday, school staffers notified the family. Jennifer was last seen at the Creekside Mobile Home Park. In she didn't show up for work. School staffers notified the family. Was she already missing by then? You see how what that that shit just trips me out completely. Emily, Jennifer was last seen at the. Hold is up. careful to remain hopeful in the words he uses, but he says the family is understandably distraught. He says the Dallas ISD teacher's assistant would not have just disappeared on her own. When she didn't show up for work on Thursday, school staffers notified the family. Jennifer was last seen at the Creekside Mobile Home Park in Seagoville, dropping off a friend Wednesday night at about 8. Later, the family says that friend received some disturbing text messages. She dropped off a friend from there. We found the car the next day, and then we went to... They found the car the next day, right? Two weeks. I'm in Texas and I had no idea. I will catch. Oh, shout out to you, Tiffany. I will catch the replay and start over after the live. But seeing no foul play in these comments got me like, no, I hear you. And then they had the like weird messages from the friends. Interesting. To do the police report. Uh, during, while we were doing the police report, we got some messages, uh, random phone number saying, uh, are you missing someone? Uh, you'll never find her and you'll never, you'll never see her again. What was your reaction to that? Well, we, we were just shocked at just, uh, looking at those messages. Family members tell us that those text messages have been turned over to police. The Texas Rangers are also now assisting in this investigation. Ahead at five, what those investigators are asking of the community and how the community is responding. Let's talk about that at five. Mm -hmm. In Mesquite, Robbie Owens, CBS News, Texas. It's still nothing. Police in Seagoville are searching for a Dallas ISD employee who may be in danger. Her family says she was last seen last week. Can and if somebody's from Texas, if they say who may be in danger, is it because she's missing or like what would qualify somebody? Because I mean, I'm assuming that if you're missing, you are in danger, right? But 
Is it just uh, a gen? Like, why would they say may be in danger? You think it's an abduction? They're not being very clear right now. I would agree with you on that one. Right. Hmm. Texas. What does that mean when somebody is uh, missing and may be in danger? Like, what would qualify them for that label? It, they're not being very clear, I would agree. For safety, maybe self-inflicted. It's not clear, right? Due to, th that's what I would assume, too. Hold up your comment. Or is it due to mental health? Heidi says maybe this is because it's out of character for her to just jump up and decide to leave on her own. Right. Hashtag the people. <laughs> Shout out to Crafty Kid. Hashtag the people have questions. Right. No. How did it? Well, how did they? How did those text messages get retrieved? So it sounds like based on what the family member is saying is that they were filing police I, reports. I do want to mention on a more serious. And. When they were filing police reports, that's when they were receiving these text messages. But some of the information, I mean, it's very like, I don't know. It's not a lot that's coming about. I wonder if they can get, now that I'm looking at the Texas Equa search, if they can get them involved too. But they're going out there. Well, an urgent search is underway for a missing Dallas ISD employee who hasn't been seen since last week. Police in Seagaville, southeast of Dallas, think she may be in danger. And Fox Wars' Dan Godwin is like... Maybe in danger. Is she? Does she need medication? Maybe in danger? Or because of those text messages that has put her in danger? Um, if it is confirmed abduction, hold up. Will the police do anything different? Will they act any any different? No, if they said in the clips the friends got the text messages. Yeah, they, they said in those clips that the messages came from the friends. Sometimes if a person has autism or ADHD, that could be in danger. Or they may not fully be able to care for themselves. It's a good point. The friends received them and the friends sent them to the family. The family and friends then reported to police. The friends received these messages while they were filing police reports. Is it the same friends that last saw her? I don't know. What I don't understand is why are they not saying missing person? Mm. You mean the police? Why the police is not classifying her? I thought they were. I could be wrong, though. Lady BB, what do you know that I don't know? Seagaville Police Department with the story. Dan. Hmm. Lauren, friends and loved ones of 24-year-old Jennifer Mendez Olesco Aga, understandably growing more concerned with each passing day. It has now been one week since she was last seen or heard from. The Seagaville Police Department is now leading this missing persons investigation, but Jennifer's family still conducting its own searches in hopes of finding clues. There are flyers being posted with Jennifer's picture. Some are being handed out to drivers or anyone else who might help get the word out. Police say Jennifer was last seen on surveillance video on Wednesday of last week, dropping off a friend at a mobile home park in Seagaville. When we found out that she never made it home that Wednesday night, it was kind of like a hint, like, hey, there's something going on. You know, she always makes it home. Uh, she was very punctual at work. Why? Mm -hmm. Christina, I'm there with you on that one. I'm looking at those friends pretty hard, too, Petty. I think the text messages were a key point to indicate she may be in danger, says Red Door Woman. But why did the friends receive the messages? Why? It's bizarre. You'd think that the messages would have been sent to the family. See, we don't even know that information. How do they know what number to text, says MJ? Right! Yeah, that's a good question. How do they know what number to text? You know? You agree about those text messages? 
for sure. Gonna say mobile homes. Who said mobile homes to make it sound more dangerous? Who said that? I don't think I said that. Um, a mobile home is a mobile home. What's the big deal? Um, but I do want to know how those numbers were traced. Police can get experts to look at where the text messages came from. But why did the friends, why would the friends receive those messages? Hmm. Like she didn't show up the next day. We're like, okay, this, this is not okay. Like something's going on. Last Thursday, Jennifer's family members found her white 2015 Buick alongside a road in Mesquite. This spot is not on the way home from where she was last seen. There were no signs of damage or evidence that anything was wrong. A Seagaville police detective searched the vehicle and found Jennifer's wallet. Family members have been returning to where the car was discovered, searching a wooded area for anything that might help solve this mysterious disappearance. We mentioned Jennifer was last seen in Seagaville, but she is a resident of Dallas. Police here are getting help from the Texas Rangers on this case, but they're also asking anyone with information about what happened to come forward and contact them. Reporting live, Seagaville PD, Dan Godwin on Good Day. I don't know, you guys. This is all very suspect. And then you got the CBS, CBS Texas as well on this um, reporting. Very... Hold up, y'all. Um... This is getting bigger. I Team Brittany, I'm kind of there with you there as well. I, I I hope so too. The fact that they even have to rule something like that out is day money back guarantee. Kind of call one eight five five seven two three eight two two six now. Happening now, Dallas police are joining in the search for a missing Dallas ISD teacher's assistant, mm. Jennifer Mendez. Olascaga was last seen on September 27th after dropping off a friend in Seagaville. Police there were handling the case, but Olascaga's family member said they did their own detective work and uncovered some surveillance video from a QT gas station. With she drove her own car. She wasn't with anybody in that surveillance. She got up and was getting like snacks or something. Everything looked fine. She didn't look like she was in distress in the new footage. Then Dallas city limits. Now, family members say the video shows Olascaga in the Dallas area after she dropped off her friend in Seagaville. But investigators also say they found her car abandoned in Mesquite. So if you know anything that can help investigators in this case, you are asked to contact Dallas or Seagaville police. See, so is it Jew? I understand. The, a lot of this was the, is just was that for Jews oh everywhere Father later at a donation. Let me stop that right there. A lot of, I, I just, hmm. I don't know, you guys. A lot of the sims off. Give me one sec. The dog is barking. We don't do we have anything that would say that she was abducted? No, nothing has really been put out there um, for her to even make that assumption. But the text messages are very concerning. Let me see. Let me switch over to this tab real quick. This is from the sun. Take it for what it's worth, because, you know, the sun likes to put a lot of ish out there that can very hard, you know, a lot of opinion based. Um, did she have a boyfriend and that we know of? I don't know, Crafty Kid. That's a good question. So she got to the gas station before after she dropped off the friend. She wasn't, well, at least, unless the friend was waiting in the car, she might have stopped at the gas station after she dropped off the friend. But that's all we know. Oh, they're only 10 miles away from each other? Okay. She pulled, she got snacks, she got gas, and everything seemed fine. She didn't look like she was in distress. This was literally three days ago that they posted this out. So she goes missing on the 27th after dropping off a friend. Okay. Family's putting out posters. 
Um, we're just out here on Beltline trying to get some, get maybe some footage, spread the word here if anybody saw her last. You know, just trying to get something out. This is the brother-in-law, Marco, who put that out there. Um, so she was spotted at the Quick Trip gas station in Seagaville, Texas, just southeast of Dallas, shortly after 8 p.m. on September 27th. Minutes earlier, she was seen dropped. So she dropped off the friend before at the Creekside Mobile Home Park in Siegville. In Siegville. The next morning, the car, which is the white 2015 Buick LaCrosse, was found abandoned 10 minutes away in Mystique. Jennifer's phone and purse were missing from the car. And family members said the driver's seat was positioned differently from how the young woman usually sets it. Her family officially reported her missing on the 28th after she failed. Okay, there you go, Queen Bella. Her family reported her missing after she failed to show up for work in Dallas. So what had happened was she wasn't at work. They're telling they found her car. She didn't show up to work, and then that's when they decided to call her missing. Queen Bella, because you were following with me on this one right here. So that's where we're at. Because Jennifer was last seen in Sigville, the case was handed over to police there on October 1st. So truly, October 1st, they didn't really start searching until way later. You wouldn't go to a gas station if you were trying. Listen. That's a good point. You wouldn't get gas if you're planning a career. If you're planning a career, Russell, like a Carly Russell career, a Carly Russell. Yeah, a lot of this is suspect. In a statement regarding the investigation provided to the U.S. Sun, Sigiva Police said that this investigation is fueled and detectives are following up all leads received. Jennifer is a special education teacher assistant in Dallas. In addition to surveillance footage, family members told the station that Jennifer's phone was last active at 10 p.m. on the night she went missing. Her family members have also shared the chilling text messages forward to them from friends in the days after she disappeared. We got some random text messages. A friend said, hey, are you missing someone? You're never going to find her and you're never going to see her again. But the number that the that sent the messages has not been traceable. Why isn't it traceable? What are those um, numbers that you can get that aren't traceable? Well, clearly, whoever took her knew the, who the friends were, right? I would be looking at the friends. Clearly, whoever took her knew who was a friend. A burner phone, thank you. Listen. <laughs> um, internet numbers, yes. But they knew who to text, yo. It ain't that interesting. They knew exactly who to text. All texts eventually are traceable. But they knew who to text. Police believe that the messages indicate foul play in Jennifer's disappearance. The text messages contain content that will lead one to believe that Jennifer's disappearance may involve foul play. Okay. May involve foul play doesn't mean that they believe it's foul play. Two different things. Search continues more than a week after her disappearance. The search for Jennifer continues. After her vehicle was found, the family searched the surrounding area. It's horrible out there. There's a lot of thorns and everything. We try to search around here just to see if we could find evidence like shoes or wallet or phone. But there's nothing. Like no clues whatsoever. So the family doesn't believe that she went missing by choice. They said that she enjoyed her job and her car was nearly paid off. Yeah, that's... Oh, man. 
The family has continued to canvas the area with signs plastered with their face. We're hoping that she's okay. If you know anything, please contact the Seagaville Police Department. This doesn't sound like somebody went missing by choice either. My opinion. There's not enough evidence, but like they knew it's weird to me that they send these random text messages and they send them to friends. They didn't send them to they knew who to text message. I would be side eyeing the friends. I don't know. I would look at the routes she took within the last few months. There's usually a trend. Sounds like some for shady friends, right, Kelly? I hope somebody saw. Yeah, right, Bo? It's just it's weird. Like, they knew exactly who to text message, and it was the friends. I don't know. But it doesn't sound like she went missing by choice. She's 24, SW. She's 24. Her car was near... Listen, I remember when my first car was nearly paid off and just being so ecstatic about that. And then the shit broke down like a month later. I was pissed off because I had to get a new car. I mean, it just never ends with cars. But maybe the friends were on the text messages. Mate. Queen? I w something. Something. I don't get a good feeling about this one either. She could have been pulled over what she thought was a stranded motorist. Right. And was abducted when she stopped to help. Just the possibility to throw out there. Right. Um, yeah, 24 and I, like, unfortunately, we can't stop by and help every motorist out there. Because you never know who the hell you're picking up, you know? Right. Me too. I'm hoping the same, too. I'm hoping the same. Anyways, guys, I'm going to let you guys go because I got to go tend to Baby Bunny. Um, I might go live. I'm definitely going to go live later. But I might go live maybe twice today, just depending on how I feel. I'm rinsing my nose. It's getting there. It's getting there. But, of course, if you guys know anything about any information that could help, spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the word. Make sure you share this. Uh, if you have any information, Seagull Police, of course. But a lot of this is not making sense. I'm side-eyeing the friends. I really am. Just saying. I'll see you guys on the next one. Rabbits out. Make sure you're hitting the like button. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. And shout out, thank you again for Rochelle, who uh, purchased memberships and became a member, and everybody else supporting the channel. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.